Hi, uh, my name is Denise Corson. I am the ATEL program coordinator and one of the ATAP partners in Rhode Island. And this presentation is on captioning and where you can find it and why it's important. So the title is Captions, Captions Everywhere. So to be aware of all these great resources out there that you might not be aware of for the deaf and hard of hearing. So the fact that technology is changing, that video use and popularity is increasing, and that the deaf and hard of hearing population is growing are all cause for the rising relevance and the need for captioning. So the American with Disabilities Act, um, which is a broad disability law that requires places of public accommodations to make accessible to those with disabilities, was created in 1990. And one of the things that they have done is with the ADA is they have predicted society would be streaming, would not be predicting thousands of movies would be streamed and technology changes though now nearly everywhere use or use Netflix to watch their favorite movies. The idea of changing technology and how it applies to accessibility is relevant, relevant not just in entertainment, but also in persons, communications and telecommunications. So um, again, one of the big areas that um, people can find captions now is in entertainment. Um, TV captioning is embedded in most TVs and you just have to turn on the controls. Um, movie captioning, there's different types of movie captioning out there. Um, there is open captioning where everybody in the audience um, can see the captions right on the screen. And there's closed captioning where people, the deaf or hard of hearing person would wear a device such as the um, glasses that you see in the bottom left-hand corner where the captions appear right on the, uh, the screen of the glasses. So um, there's performances now that you can have um, LED captioning on. Um, they're at Trinity Rep at some performances and PPAC at some performances. Um, you just have to know before you go which performances have it. Um, if you're looking at movies, look before you go, see which ones have opening captioning and which ones have closed captioning um, and make your choices based on that. So again, they're out there, but sometimes you just have to look for it. So another place that you will find lots of captioning now, um, especially with the COVID, is in meetings, teleconferences, phone calls, video calls, and videos. Um, many people might have experienced CART before where there's a live person um, captioning what's being said, um, either in a meeting or court, um, so that the hard of hearing or deaf person can read what's what is being said at the event. Um, there's a big boom of ASR, which is automatic speech recognition, where there's lots of technologies now that are using um, not live people, but speech recognition technology to be able to understand what's being said around people. Um, there are smartphone apps that caption noises, words, everything in your environment. Um, there's relay conference captioning, which in a later um, presentation, James Back is going to discuss. Um, and there's captioning telephones, which your telephone, um, the people will, you be able to read, the deaf and hard of hearing person could read what's being said to them and speak through a telephone as long as they can voice for themselves. So again, we just talked briefly uh, about cart reporters. And again, this would be an example of a cart reporter um, typing what's being said. And on the screen, um, everybody that is at that meeting can read what's being said. Um, some cart reporters are right in the meeting um, in person. Um, and then there are services that if you don't have, you, you live where you can't get an interpreter quickly, 
I mean, a cart reporter quickly. Um, you can use some type of smart technology to bring a remote interpreter, I'm sorry, a remote cart reporter into the meeting so that they can caption what's being said. So um, this is what has been taking off, um, especially in the last year is um, ASR, automatic speech recognition. Um, it basically is technology used to transcribe spoken word into written text. Um, you can find these on Zoom meetings. You can find them on Google Meet. Um, you can find it on Skype where when you activate it, um, that the words will be on the screen so that you can follow along with what's being said if you're unable to hear what's being said. Um, in your presentations, both Google Slide and PowerPoint have something that you can turn on in their settings that you, when you share a PowerPoint, that captioning will come up at the bottom of the screen through automatic speech recognition. Um, social media, this is all pretty recent. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook Live, YouTube um, have all content for captioning. So all these things that you would want to watch with these video contents, um, now you can have automatic speech recognition turned on so you can enjoy that. Um, recently in the last month, Google Chrome added real-time automatic captions for anything um, that you enter in their web content. So again, that can be used with anything you access through that browser. Okay, and then when you, you hear the term, there's an app for that. There really is unbelievable apps out there um, that use um, captioning. Um, the first types of apps I want to talk about are in-person um, iOS and Android apps. So basically, if your phone is not an Apple um, or an iOS, then it is an Android. So Android devices all have the ability to have live transcribed, downloaded on it for free, and it will transcribe in-person communication um, but again, that's Android, I mean, sorry, that's Android only um, on all devices, Apple and iOS, you can download live caption, Otter AI, Big Note and Ava. Again, each app is a little different than the others and it's best to try out and see what your preferences are. So again, um, the first one I discussed was live transcribe. And again, it's for Android only. It is a free app on Android only, again, Android only, um, to participate in face-to-face -face conversations. Um, you can type responses. The font size is adjustable. It does require internet connection or data. And I have a little video I want to play.
So again, I wanted to show that video because it really shows you how easy it was for somebody to see what was going on around them and communicate with the world around them. If you weren't able to type back your responses, if you weren't able to verbally speak your responses, um, there is a option that you can type back to the person um, that you is in the room with you. So again, if you can't voice back, you can type back to somebody. Um, it doesn't read it back, but you can show them your phone. So if you were in a place that you didn't have an interpreter and you couldn't speak for yourself, you could type for yourself and, and, and use that technology. So um, now I want to show you, this is um, for iOS only, it's live caption. It is a little similar, but again, I wanted to show you something on a iOS. Um, there is um, a fee if you use it for more than like 60 seconds at a time. So if you plan to use it a lot, you do have to pay $2.99 a month. Um, you can also type responses on this. You can adjust the font size and it does require internet connection or data. So that is required. And I'm just gonna show you a video um, that's for iOS. So again, um, this is again, the same thing that for Android, but this is iOS or Apple. Um, unfortunately, there is a small charge for it, but as you can see, it would be very beneficial for people that would need that service. And again, you can type back if you're not able to voice your responses, just like you can on live transcribe. So um, otter.ai, again, is iOS and Android. So again, this is similar um, to what we were discussing before. Um, what's interesting about this is it does break the speakers down by who's talking. So there is some advantages to this. You can send um, transcriptions to other people. Uh, there, so again, it, it is a wonderful resource that can be embedded into meetings like Zoom. Um, again, there, you, it's best to try different things and find out what's best. They all work a little different. Um, but again, this is a really great one that you can find on both Otter, I mean, both iOS and Android. Um, this again is, this is another app that is on both uh, iOS and Android. It's a free text app, which allows you to participate in face-to-face -face conversations more easily. Um, you can also type responses. 
And this one also allows you to use text to speech. So when you type it, it will voice back to you. So that's what's a little bit different about this one. And it is a free text app. Okay, so again, this is another one that can be on either one. It can be on iOS or Android. And again, all these apps are just a little bit different than others. Um, what's really wonderful about this app, um, there are charges that do apply um, if you use it for more than a certain amount of time. Um, but I believe you do get, um, it's $9.99 monthly if you want unlimited. But what is really great about this is if you had a bunch of people in a meeting or a table um, and they're all sitting at different places where a microphone might not capture what's being said, like in those other apps I discussed, each person logs into Ava through their smartphone and each person is using their own microphone on their own phone. So it is clear about what's being said. So if I'm sitting on one side of the table and somebody else in a meeting is sitting way at the other side of the table, it hears the microphone of their phone and says who it is it's speaking at each time and it identifies the different people. So this is a wonderful device for when many people are trying to participate in a conversation um, again, it color codes who's speaking at what time. So it is really easy for people that would normally miss out on those types of communications to be able to find that they're participating because they know what each person is saying um, on their phone. So that's a really great resource. It can be used for other things and meetings as well. So again, something um, to check into if, if that's a concern for you. So now I just want to talk about some apps for communication over the telephone. So um, Android and iOS, so all smartphones have the option for all three of these services, Inno Caption, Caption Call Mobile, and Caption Me. So all three of those services are free through the FCC, so there is no charge to you you would make a phone call and you would get captions on what the person is saying to you. So again, I have a video to demonstrate how this works. So this is not for in-person communication. This is for on your smartphone for mobile communication. So that was just a really quick app. Um, they all basically do similar things. How the captions present on the phone can be a little different. So again, they're free to download for deaf and hard of hearing individuals. So I suggest that you try them. They're all free and see which platform works better. But they all, again, you put your phone on speaker or use a headset. Um, and you can talk through the microphone. And again, if you can hear or you have some hearing, uh, you are hearing what the person is saying live, but you're getting captions on the screen at the same time. So some of that technology is using live operators and some are using automatic speech recognition. So some of those services are faster than others. So depending on whether you want a live operator there or you are good with automatic speech recognition. So again, they all are a little different, but they do the same thing. Um, so again, they're free to download. So again, um, try out and see which one you would prefer. So um, I want to discuss one phone that has been rising to the top for the deaf and hard of hearing with the amount of features that are coming out on it. Um, it is an Android device and it's called a Google Pixel. 
And these services are available on the four, the four XL and the third generation. Um, so again, it's called a Google Pixel. And again, all of these things are available on it. In the future, they will probably be available on all Android devices, but for right now, these are things that are all available just on the Google Pixel. So again, some might be on some Androids, but the Google Pixel has them all. Um, we discussed in an earlier slide, um, live transcribe. So that's something we've already discussed. Um, live captions, um, it's not the live caption app, it's live captions is something you find on the Google Pixel. It captions all media on your device, no matter what the source. It captions video, audiobooks, podcasts, and more. So again, that is just available on the Pixel. What has just come out is something called Live Relay, which the apps that we discussed in the prior slide are all relay apps um, that use services um, that the FCC provides. They have it built in to the Pixel that when you make phone calls, it automatically connects through the live relay if you choose that app and transcribes everything without getting a secondary app downloaded to your phone. Um, they also have something called Google Recorder, which is similar to live transcribe, but the big difference is you don't need internet connection or data connection or Wi-Fi. It works remotely right in front of you. So nothing gets sent out to get transcribed to come back to you. So everything is completely private and it doesn't require any type of data or internet. So that is what is really fabulous about that. Um, so those are some of the great new things that are available on that phone. Um, Androids, I believe in the future, will have that on all of them. So again, that's something that's up and coming. But again, for something right now, if you're an Android user, those are the things that are available to you um, if you get a Pixel. So um, the CapTel telephone is, um, I'm sure many of you have heard of it. It's like the captioning apps that we talked about, but it's on your landline phone. So you, it does require internet in order to use it. Um, and basically whatever is said comes up on the screen for you to read. Um, James Litback from Rhode Island Relay is going to discuss that in his um, presentation. So I will let him uh, do that in the next presentation. Um, so again, and uh, James Litback will be discussing in a prior slot in, in, in a future presentation, um, the CapTel Relay Conference Captioning and Sprint IP Relay. So I just wanted to give people information on um, our program that I work for, the ATEL program. Um, we are, uh, if you are a Rhode Island resident, you have a hearing, speech, or neuromuscular disability and make less than 250% um, of the poverty level which is about 30,000 a year. Um, any of our devices um, are free to you. So how would somebody apply to our program? Um, you just need to complete an application for either a landline device or a wireless device. Um, and you need to have a certificate of disability signed by a doctor or audiologist and you do need proof of your financial uh, eligibility. So these are the types of landline devices we have. Our inventory does change as things change, but this is our, our basic uh, uh, description of the phones that we carry. Um, we do amplified and we also do captioning. So amplified phones just make things louder and clearer. Um, they have a 95 decibel rings um, and about 50 decibels of amplification for hearing. And they also adjust for tone, which means clarity. So again, some people hear better on lower or higher frequencies. So these phones allow you not to just make things louder, but to make things crisper. So that's what the tone does. And then we do have two models of captioning phones. 
um, the 840i, which is on the left bottom, um, and the two uh, 2400i, which is the black um, telephone. One is a little more, I'd say, if you're not tech savvy, the CapTel 840i, the white one, um, works more like a standard telephone. And some people that are not used to tablets and things like that prefer that one. Um, the, the CapTel 2400i, um, that one has a touch screen. Um, it has Bluetooth to connect to hearing aids or headsets, um, and it has a speaker phone. So it does have more technology built into it um, for somebody that likes a little more technology. Um, we also do phones um, for people with neuromuscular disabilities. The black phone on the bottom um, right, that is for somebody that can't hold or operate a phone. They can answer or hang up the phone with the remote control. Um, so again, it's just a great for somebody with um, um, issues holding and operating a telephone. Um, another really popular device we have is um, the Freedom Alert. It is an emergency device that calls 911 or a friend or family in the event of an emergency. There is no monthly fee to it. It goes right to a 911 operator or a friend or family, depending on how it's programmed. So again, if your main concern is just being alone and not being able to get help, um, that's a great option for people. So then for our cellular devices, um, we do iPads, iPhones, the Google Pixel, and the Lively Flip. So those are all the types of phones that you can apply for. Um, they are all open-ended phone um, where you can get services from any provider that you want, except for the Lively Flip. That's the one all the way to the left. That one is through Great Call. It's great for somebody that doesn't want a lot of technology. It does tend to be a little more expensive monthly because you can't choose your carrier. You have to use their carrier. But all the other devices, you can choose whatever carrier you want to use. So the ATEL program provides you with just the device and it's up to you to secure the service to go for data or Wi-Fi. So um, we also have a loaner library. Um, if people are not eligible for the ATEL program and they just want to try something out, you can borrow something for a few weeks to see if it's something that would interest you and we can give you information on how to purchase things. If you're going somewhere where you just need to borrow something and you don't want to necessarily buy something like a um, FM system, which is great for meetings. So if you had a meeting and you have a hard time hearing at those meetings, um, you can borrow this device and the speaker would have one piece of the device and the uh, you, the hard of hearing or deaf individual would have the other end of the device and it would feel like they're speaking right into your ear. Again, you'd have to have some type of hearing for that to be purposeful for you. Um, so again, more for people with moderate hearing loss. So probably again, not um, the higher um, end of the hearing loss spectrum. Um, we also have, um, which has been used a lot during the COVID, is the Pocket Talker, which is a personal amplifying device. So again, this is more for hard of hearing individuals that they would wear a headset and they can place the device, point the device to who's speaking, and it just makes their voice louder and clearer in their ears. Um, because of a lot of people during COVID, couldn't go, have their loved ones go to, to um, doctor's appointments and things like that. They needed to be more reliant on themselves. So that would make, give them the ability to hear better when people are either coming into their room or they're going to appointments. Um, we also have alarm clocks and smoke detectors that you can borrow to see if there's something that you're interested in. So again, they're short-term loans just to see if there's something that you need, why yours is getting fixed, or just to see if it's something you'd be interested in purchasing.
So this is my contact information. Um, always feel free to email me with any questions, even if you don't qualify. Um, I can give you information on where to get these devices from or, you know, other maybe places that you can get them free through other programs. Um, feel free to visit our website. Um, it is changing in the next maybe six months, so stay tuned for that. Um, and we'll have even more resources like videos that you can reference on some of the new technologies out there. And we also provide a lot of information on our Facebook page through Rhode Island ATAP, which is one of is the um, agency we're a part of with four other agencies in Rhode Island that we share assistive technology information. And um, we are now more out in the road and mobile. So that's my new mobile phone that people are free to call me if, again, if they have any questions or I can help them in any way. So thank you very much for your time today.